The Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Keep an Eye on Your Heart. kitchen floor is going to have one of its hardest days. Does that worry you? Well, not if the linoleum is protected with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Then, no matter how many feet go scuffing and scraping across the floor, the linoleum itself is safe, unharmed. Also, if you should spill anything on the floor, a damp cloth quickly wipes it up. Not only that, but linoleum that is kept shining with glow coat is as bright and colorful as the day it was first put down. And everybody knows that it's easier to work in a cheerful kitchen than in a dull one. Johnson's Glow Coat, as you know, is self-polishing, which means it needs no rubbing or buffing, practically no work from you. It's a wonderful feeling to have your Christmas shopping all done and wrapped and sent out and cards all mailed so you can sit down and relax by an open fire. Ah, peace. It's wonderful. And here at 79 Wistful Vista, settling down to wallow in that wonderful feeling, we find Faber McGee and Molly. <laughs> ah, boy, ain't this a picture. Snow softly falling and candle in the window and fire in the fireplace. Yeah. And no wood in the basket. <laughs> you better go out and get a couple of more logs, dearie. Oh, let it go. We'll be going to bed pretty quick. You don't let the fire go out? Sure. Who am I to give Santa Claus the hot foot? <laughs> Besides, the wood is outside and it'll be all wet from the snow. Oh, it'll burn all right. Yeah, but it'll sputter and throw sparks out on the floor. Might catch the rug on fire. And it might spread to the curtains and the furniture. What? Why, shucks, the whole house might go up in a blaze. Might even touch off the house next door. Oh, my God. Uh, McGee, what are you doing? Well, throw the piano out the window. We can save that. You run up and get your jewelry. I'll call the fire. Oh, here. Yeah. Heavenly day. Stop it. There isn't any fire. Huh? Oh. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Boy, I should have been a salesman. <laughs> I can convince myself that almost anything. I wonder who that is. Come in. Delivery for you, lady. Bonton Department Store. Okay, Joe, bring it in. Oh, my, my. Hey, look at that, will you, Molly? Wonder who sent us that. Search me. The name's on the inside, no doubt. Uh Well, thank you, boys, and a Merry Christmas to you. Thanks, lady. Same to you and many others. (laughs) Heavenly day. What a whopping big package. Wonder what's in it. Well, what do you say we see who it's from? Find out, no. Oh, look, McGee. Here. Here's the card on the wrapping. Well, who sent it to us? Oh, it isn't ours. Huh? It's addressed to Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh. They delivered it to the wrong house. No, but now look, m- maybe it's really ours, and they got Gildersleeve's name on it by mistake. Huh? Now, listen, don't be silly. Don't unwrap it any farther now. My goodness, No, sirree. It. I've started it, and now I'm going to see what it is. We can wrap it up again later. Where's the scissors? I gotta cut this string. On the shelf in the hall closet. Okay, in here? Yeah. Hey, somebody must have straightened it. Oh! 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 (laughs) (sighs) Gotta straighten up that closet one of these days. Well, never mind that now. Bring the scissors and cut the string, if you must. And I don't think we should, but if we have to, hurry up. (laughs) I want to see what's in it. (laughs) Oh, for 
goodness sake. Look, McGee. Oh, a mean? combination radio and phonograph. And beautiful, too. Hmm. Some stranger must think pretty highly of Gildersleeve. How do you know it's a stranger? Must be if he thinks highly of Gildersleeve. <laughs> Oh, look, it's got an automatic record changer. Uh, Plays eight records in succession. Oh. Let's try it. You ought to try that one again. <laughs> let's now, try it. Huh? huh? Let's try it. Oh, let's... <laughs> no, no, dearie, that wouldn't be right. It isn't ours. Besides, we haven't got any records. Oh, we got that broken one we just did. <laughs> There's records inside the cabinet. Look. Well, all right. I don't think Mr. Gildersleeve would mind, even if he knew and he won't. You know how to run the thing? Looks pretty complicated. Why, it's a cinch. All you got to do is put eight records on this gadget here. Yeah. Like that. Turn the volume on. Come saw. Set it for phonograph. Put the lever down. Insert a needle. Hey, plug the cord in the wall socket, Molly. Okay. All set, McGee. Ah, here she goes. Ah, now we can sit down and relax. Now for a half hour of uninterrupted music... That was... Hey. Oh, McGee, shut it off, quick. Something's wrong. Couldn't be. I know how to start this. Oh. Oh, dear. Hey. Oh. Hey. Duck, McGee, duck. He's throwing the records at me. Hey. <laughs> hey, reach in and shut it off. Right in the house. Shut it off yourself. It ain't mad at you. It's mad at me. Oh, dear. Oh, hey. Oh, oh my gosh. Uh, listen, I'll sneak along the floor and pull the plug out. Okay. Don't let it see you. Oh. 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 Heavenly days, the whole thing fell apart. Look at that pile of junk. We'll never get that put back together. What are we going to do? Oh, boy. We'll never be able to explain to Mr. Gildersleeve what... Oh, that's him now. Uh, Molly, don't answer the door. What do we do? Oh, McGee! <laughs> Molly, there's, there's only one thing to do. We've got to get him a duplicate phonograph. But where? Same place this one came from. At the Bon Ton. Come on. Uh, come on, we'll go out the back door. Don't wait till I get my hat. Where's my hat? In the hall closet. I'll go bareheaded. Let's go. <laughs> On, Molly. We'll never be able to fight our way through that revolving door. Well, we've got to try it, McGee. Huh? It's our duty. Kiss me and let's go. Goodbye, Molly. And if I don't see you again inside, well, you've been a good wife, and I'm glad to have knew you. Thank you, dearie. And remember, huh? whichever of us fights his way through, he must carry on. Goodbye, sweetheart. Goodbye. Are you ready? Ready. Okay. Signal. 16, 19, 42. Chip, head it through there. <laughs> Oh, thank yeah. goodness. 
goodness, you made it. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, the terrain, where do we go? Search me. Maybe, maybe we'd better ask for a floor walker. Uh, hey, a floor walker? Yes, sir. Will you please tell us where we can buy a phonograph? Why, certainly, madam. You'll find the phonograph... The phonograph... The phonograph... I think they're located... Located in that department... What kind of a phonograph? <laughs> Phonograph and radio, bud. Oh, I think I know exactly. Exactly. Let's see, three aisles over in the home for in the home for. Gosh, I hope you'll excuse me, folks. I I seem to have the hit. I seem to have the hit. The hit up. Exactly. How did you know? <laughs> well, you had me fool. I thought you swallowed a cat this time. <laughs> Three aisles over, eh? Well, much obliged, bud. Oh, not at all, sir. Just ask for the manager of that department. The manager in charge of radios is Mr. Hannah. Mr. Hannah. Mr. Hannah. Mr. George P. Hannah. Hannah. George P. Hannah. Ask for George. Fine floor walker. Say, incidentally, McGee, huh? have you thought of the cost of this outfit we're getting? Yeah, but we got to do it anyway, Molly. We can arrange it on the budget plan. Budget plan? Yeah, you know. A life membership in the We Bit Off More Than We Could Chew Club. Hey, Fripper, Molly! Who's that? Sounds like Wilcox. I'd know that voice anyway. Oh, there he is. Hi, Harlow! Hello, folks. Doing a little last-minute shopping? Yes, we are. What have you got there, Mr. Wilcox? Oh, this? Well, it's a Christmas present from the sponsor. I'm taking it up to get it framed. Framed? What is it? Well, now, that's a silly question, McGee. It must be a picture. Oh, not necessarily. I'd like to frame Uncle Dennis, and he's no picture. <laughs> Oh, but this is a honey. Here, let me show you. There it is. Oh, well, heavenly days. A life-size photograph of Mr. Wilcox with a can of Johnson's wax in each hand. The beauty, isn't it? And just what I wanted. Sure looks like you, Harlow. Yeah. But maybe you can have it retouched. <laughs> it certainly is a speaking likeness. Yes, sir. I almost expect to hear myself saying... Johnson's Wax is the finest protection for floors and furniture that money can buy. <laughs> That's funny. I can hear you saying that, too. <laughs> <laughs> and just look. Just look at those cans of wax there. Yeah. Aren't they perfect? Beautiful. Why, it looks like you could take them right out of my hands and use them on the woodwork and lampshades and everything that needs a film of protection against wear and dampness and scratching. But why two cans? Ah, that's significant. Yes. On one hand, we have the paste wax, and on the other hand, the liquid wax is good, too. Uh, well, look, it's the likeness of me that's so wonderful. Why, you'd almost expect me to step right out of the picture. Well, why don't you? I, oh, oh, all right. See you later, folks. Oh, so well, Merry Christmas. McGee, what makes you so rude to Mr. Wilcox all the time? He's such a nice lad. I know. I just throw that in for a dramatic conflict. I see. Look, we better go over this way, Molly. The car... Hi, mister. Oh, hello there, little girl. What you doing down here in all this mob? Oh, I just came in to look at the dolls. <laughs> That's fun, ain't it? Uh, before I was married, I used McGee. to... McGee! Uh, are you, uh, you thinking of buying one, sis? Oh, no. I was just looking at a new kind of a little doll, is all. Oh. Maybe I can have one sometime if I'm a good girl. Though it's an awful price to pay, I sometimes think. <laughs> Uh, you think so, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we got to be on our way, sis. It's nice to see you, and a Merry Christmas to you. And the same to you, Mr. McGee, and you too, Mrs. McGee. Gee, it's been nice seeing you. You're such nice people. We are? Sure you are, I bet you. You're always so nice to little girls like me. Oh, well, shucks, sis. You know, when I was looking at that new kind of a little dolly, I said to myself... Yes, I said. I bet you if Mr. McGee was here and saw that uh, that this doll was two ninety five and I only had two dollars, I bet you he'd buy it for me. Just like just like gee, I wish I could snap my fingers. <laughs> What's so special about this particular doll, sis? Oh, gee, it holds things in its hands. Oh. I can't it's got electric magnets here. Chism. His too. <laughs> huh? I'll let it go. I'll have to, I guess. I only got two dollars. But, gee, I shouldn't be telling you my troubles, mister. You're so big and important. You you probably got your own troubles, I bet you. Well, goodbye. Oh, now. hey, wait a minute, sis. Wait a minute. Here, here. 
Here's extra buck. Now you go get that doll. Oh, mister, thanks ever so much. <laughs> this is wonderful. It's just these little things that restore a woman's faith in human nature. <laughs> well, I never expected you to do a thing like that. <laughs> you didn't, eh? <laughs> no. I didn't have you pegged for more than two bits. <laughs> Look, here's a radio just like the one that came for Gildersleeve. Oh, that's perfect. Now, if we can only find a sales... Have you wait. been waited on, folks? Uh, we'll take this radio phonograph, bud. Uh, can we get it sent out special tonight, right away? It's an emergency. Have you an account with this store, sir? No, but we'll take this machine on your budget plan. Yeah. Very well. Now, if you'll sit down here and answer a few questions. Uh, name? Uh, Fira McGee. 79 was for Vista. Have you any other accounts in the city? No. No, we haven't. We always pay cash. Oh, that's bad. Bad. You can't expect to have good credit if you always pay cash. Uh, where do you do your banking? Where do we do our banking? Yes. The corn exchange and skip the wisecrack. I see. Well, I'm sure it'll be all right. Now, the price of the machine you're purchasing is $450. No! And... $450? Bucks. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute there, genie with the light brown bald spot. <laughs> We can't afford that. that, however, includes two packages of needles for the phonograph. Oh. Oh, oh well, that's different. Yeah. <laughs> Sounded a little steep there for a minute. <laughs> now about this bud plan budget. I mean, this budget plan. Huh? <laughs> oh, that. Well, we prorate the $450 plus sales tax, of course, over a period of, say, 18 months. Right. Let me see. With carrying charges, 12% to financing and another 14% to demurrage, 5% to cabbage. Cabbage? Yes, when we repossess it, we always take a cab. Oh. Let me see. Let me see. 5.31, dismal point, 23. Dismal point? You mean decimal point, don't you, Scrooge? <laughs> You'll find it dismal in this case. Here we are. All worked out. You bring in twenty nine fifty two on the 15th of every month. Okay, tonight. bud, okay. Now, look. we got to get this machine out right away. There's a fellow waiting for it. I'll take care of that, folks. Don't worry. There's a truck leaving for your neighborhood in just a few minutes. Hey, Charlie, Herman, load this radio on the truck and get it right out. Much obliged, bud. I hey, don't now, how... wait a minute. Huh? I just thought of something. Uh, yes, Mrs. McGee? You said we have to make this payment on the 15th of every month. Mm -hmm. Now, what if the 15th should come on a Sunday? Uh -huh. Oh, I never thought of that. Let's make it the 14th of every month. That's better. Come on, Molly. All right. <laughs> The King's Men, in the spirit of Christmas, sing Home Sweet Home.
this radio put, lady. Well, uh, just set it anywhere, boys. Yeah, much obliged, fellas. Nice of you to get it out here so quick. Yes, oh, that's is. okay, Doc. Ain't it, Hoyman? Yeah. <laughs> Well, what are you waiting for? Oh, McGee, we haven't wished them a Merry Christmas. Oh, that's right. Merry Christmas, fellas. <laughs> Thanks. Is that all? McGee. Huh? Oh, yes. A Happy New Year, too, fellas. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Must be tired. Well, let's take the wrappings off, Mom. No, 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 no. Huh? Leave them on. Then when Mr. Gillis sees something, it'll be off. Oh, is that him? Let me look. Oh, no. It's only the Duchess of Uppington. Duchess? Yeah. That's one of her dukes banging on the door. Come in. Ah, you take greetings, Mrs. McGee and Mr. McGee. Oh, same to you, Uppy. <laughs> and say, thanks for that Christmas present you sent me. Oh, Mr. McGee, you've unwrapped those cigars already. Oh, I didn't have to unwrap them, Uppy. <laughs> they came right out of the wrappers by themselves. <laughs> Oh, I do hope you enjoy them. I went to a lot of trouble drying those cigars in the oven just so they'd burn better. Oh, you did, did you? Yes. Oh, I do hope you liked them, Mr. McGee. Ah, <laughs> uh, Hoppy, I can't tell you what I think of those cigars. <laughs> uh, I knew you would like them. You see, my grandfather brought them from Puerto Rico in 1847. <laughs> yes, and he only smoked the best, you know. <laughs> hey, uh, when your grandfather settled here, he owned most of this town, didn't he, Abigail? Uh, yes, yes, I believe he did, my dear. Most of the land was acquired by, uh... By uh, Croucher's rights, I believe. Don't you mean squatter's rights? Well, yes, Mr. McGee. But Crouch seems so much more refined than, than squat. <laughs> Can't you just see here as a little girl, McGee, playing Crouch tag? <laughs> Well, I, I must go now. Uh, William is... Uh, oh, that is Mr. Mills. Asked me to order 12 quarts of milk for tomorrow morning. 12 quarts of milk? Yes. He's bringing over a few friends to drink my health on Christmas Day. Oh, isn't that nice? That's very temperate of them, too, to drink your health in milk. Yeah, they can't be musicians. <laughs> well, uh... Who are they, Uppy? Oh, I didn't get the names of all of them, but uh, two of them are very old friends of Mr. Mills. Oh, that's <laughs> yes, Tom and Jerry. Oh. Good night, Mr. Mills. <laughs> you know, McGee, she's a very good-hearted woman at heart. <laughs> yeah, I know. I heard the only reason she's so light-headed is her father was a feather merchant down in Kentucky. <laughs> he was. Yeah. Huh? He was weighed down upon the Swanee River. Oh. <laughs> Don't you get it, Molly? I says he was a feather merchant oh, and weighed down hey, upon the... Hey, funny, McGee. Oh. Hey? <laughs> I was kind of tickled by that feather merchant myself. Oh, well, what's the... Come in. Oh, there, folks. Say, did the Bonton Department Store leave a package here for me? Ah, uh -huh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, they had just come a few moments ago, Gildersleeve. Good thing it didn't come before, too, because we were out. Yeah. Well, I'm certainly glad it finally got here. You see, I told the Bon Ton, if I wasn't at home, to bring it over here, McGee. Uh, I don't suppose you ever stopped to think, Gildersleeve, that we might not care to have your Christmas junk all over our living room. Now, McGee, for goodness sake. Well, I don't care. Next time he expects a ton of merchandise, let him stay home and get it. No, look here, McGee. I won't look here. All year long, I've took your petty little annoyances, Gildersleeve. You think at least on Christmas you'd leave us in peace. Now take your dad's ratted package and go on home. You're a hard man, McGee. <laughs> but I'll go. But let me wish you a Merry Christmas. Both of you. Well, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. The same to you. And don't forget your package. Well, it isn't mine. Oh, no? Well, whose is it? It's yours, McGee. I was giving you that for Christmas. Oh, <laughs> dear. Oh, dear. You, you mean you... Oh, oh look, you killed a sleeve. I never realized it. I, I mean... No, I... no. He never realized, Mr. Gildersleeve. But I'll keep reminding him on the 14th of every month. Oh, I didn't know, Gildersleeve. I'm a rat, Gildersleeve. A triple-plated, 14-carat, fur-lined, rabbit-eared rat. I had no excuse for popping off like that. Let alone to you, my best friend. Why do people act like that? 
especially at this time of year. I'm sorry, Gil. I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's all right, McGee. No hard feelings. But why don't you unwrap it and see what it is? I wonder what it could be. Uh, you unwrap it, Gildersleeve. Surprise us. <laughs> all right, by George, I will, McGee. <laughs> You can open your eyes now, McGee. Look. Say, a combination radio and phonograph. Gee, that's wonderful, Gildersleeve. Thanks a million. Isn't it wonderful? Though? I thought you'd like it, folks. Yeah. I've got one just like it myself. Yeah? Wonderful machines. Plays eight records in succession. Not really. Well, what do you know? Here, let me show you. All you have to do is put the records on here. Yeah. yeah. I uh, turn on the volume. Yeah, be sure the needle is tight. Now, watch this closely, dearie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You uh, turn it on here and relax for a half hour of lovely music. <laughs> My goodness, what's that? Oh. Look out, Mr. Gildersleeve. Come on under the table with us, Gildersleeve. <laughs> what's the idea? Oh. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it threw a record at me, McGee. <laughs> Move over, you two. Oh, hey. oh, my goodness, this is terrible. How did you happen to think of getting under here so quick? Oh, this is where we always go. Look out! What? Oh! oh. Many of you this evening have interrupted your Christmas Eve activities to listen to Fibber McGee and Molly. Perhaps you've just enjoyed a holiday feast spread out on a gleaming wax-polished tabletop. Or perhaps you're in the midst of that most pleasant of all Christmas duties, wrapping your gifts and placing them under the tree on the wax-protected living room floor. Before Fibber and Molly return, may I say just a word for our sponsors, the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat. I'd like to express their appreciation for your loyalty during the past year, both to their products and to this program. And to wish you one and all a very Merry Christmas. Ladies and gentlemen, before we say goodnight, we want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. From Molly and me and all our cast. Our cast isn't all here, dearie. What you mean? Well, where's Nick DiPopolis and... Horatio K. Boomer and the old timer. Oh, him. He went to Chicago to spend the holidays with his folks. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. Some of you may be getting new cars for Christmas if you've been very, very good. But any one of you could have had a new-looking car at very little cost and with very little work. Wouldn't it be more fun driving a bright, shiny automobile, one that's wax-polished with Johnson's Car New? This sensational new auto polish both cleans and wax polishes in one easy operation in half the time it used to take. Ask your dealer for Johnson's Car New, spelled C-A-R-N-U. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Oh.